let's just continue to lift our voices. We worship you, Lord. We magnify you. Do it loud enough where you can hear yourself. Give him praise tonight. I just feel like there's some um, praise that needs to happen tonight that's going to set free. And you know what it takes when you're up against a mountain? No one else, no one else can praise your mountain down. You got to use your voice in the circumstances that you're facing. Jesus has already won the victory for us, but you know what? It takes his word to enforce that victory. And so we have to use the words of our mouth. And you know, praise is a weapon. Praise is a weapon. And you know what? It doesn't matter if you feel like it. It doesn't matter if you're saying, well, I don't want to do that. You know, oftentimes we don't want to praise, but you know what? That's called faith. We got to take a step of faith and say, you know what? Your word, Lord. Your word over my circumstances. Your word over depression. Your word over heaviness. Your word. And let's begin to magnify him and make him bigger. Make him bigger than anything we're facing. Whatever things may look like. Whatever situation. Whatever report. We say, Jesus, you're greater. You're greater. Lift up your voice, church. You're greater. Jesus, we honor you tonight and we say you be magnified. You be lifted high. There is no one greater than you. No one is greater than our God and we magnify you in this house tonight. We say you be lifted up over bodies, over relationships, over lack, over poverty. We say you be lifted high. You be lifted high. We say the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every other name must bow. Thank you, Lord. We magnify you tonight with our words. We say you are Lord, and we trust you. There is no other person we put our trust in other than you. Only you. Just say that tonight. Only you, Lord. Only you, Lord. I magnify only you. I put my trust only in you. We do that tonight. We say it's you, Lord. It's you. It's you we magnify. It's you we glorify. You deserve all honor and all praise. There is no one like you. None in all the earth. You're greater. Just say that tonight. You're greater. You're greater. Picture what you're facing tonight. Close your eyes. Picture what you're facing. It may be one thing. It may be multiple things. But you say, Lord, you're greater. You're greater. You see that thing bow to his greatness, to his mighty power. You're greater, Lord. You're greater than lack. You're greater than insufficiency. You're greater than fear. You're greater than doubt. You're greater than poverty. You're greater than sickness. You're greater. You're greater, Lord. You are great. And we praise you tonight. We get our eyes over onto you. Off of the day, off of circumstances, and we get our eyes focused on you, the greater one. The greater one. And not only are you great, but you're great in us. You're great through us. Thank you, Lord. You are great. And we honor you tonight in Jesus' name. Well, you can be seated tonight. Give the Lord a shout. He's good. Amen. You know you can smile in church. It's good to smile. It's good to shout. It's good to praise. Amen. That was kind of weak. That was still really weak. Hey, what does the Bible say? Where there's a spirit of heaviness, what do you do? Just wallow in it? If you're feeling heavy or down, the answer is not sitting and thinking on it, sitting and pondering on it, rehearsing in your mind everything that you have to do or all the problems. What does it say? Praise. Praise. And you know why praise is a battle when you're heavy? Because it works. So you got to do it. 
You just got to make a choice to do it. I totally forgot my notes. So uh, can you bring me both those and my, and my iPad? Thank you. Okay. Well, I am excited to minister tonight. How many of you are excited to be here? How many of you are expecting something from the Lord tonight? I love what Mona shared. It's so, so important that our expectation, it says that on those doors when we come in, is an invitation for what? God to move. My expectation is important. Your expectation is important. And I know we say this a lot, but it's not just me or Pastor Nate or whoever is up in this pulpit's job to get you what, you're, what you need. In fact, if your trust and your hope is in a good sermon or a good worship set, you're going to be disappointed. Sometimes maybe you'll be, oh, that was good. Other times you may be very disappointed. Why? Because your hope and your trust is in the wrong thing. Now, God uses vessels. He uses tools. But where does our hope and our expectation should be on him? So I come tonight to receive from him, and I honor that. And you know what? Your expectation of pulling on him tonight is so key to what he wants to get you. What do you see? In Jesus' own hometown, what happened? He came to do something great. He came to do something mighty. There's supposed to be, I believe, another chapter or two or three chapters of everything that he was able to do in his hometown. But you know what? It was limited based off of what? No honor, no expectation for what he had in store. They dumbed it down and they just said, oh, it's just Jesus of Nazareth. We know him. Are we treating the Lord that way? Oh, it's just church. It's just the word again. I'm, I'm just coming. Or are we saying, Lord, I want everything. Are we like the woman who was like reaching out? <laughs> if I can just touch him, if I can just touch him, I know I'll be made whole. And you know what? She received the fullness of her miracle. She wasn't just healed. She was made whole. And I believe there's stuff, you know, you can be made whole tonight, just sitting right in your seat. Maybe you have depression. Maybe you have mind problems. Maybe you have sickness in your body. Maybe there's relational stuff going on. Did you know at the power of God's word tonight going forth, it has the ability to heal that, to restore that? I don't even have to say a healing scripture. I don't have to say the exact scripture you're standing on. What does it say? There is life in the word. That means anytime the word is present, I have the capability to receive that and life goes into me. Isn't that amazing? That means strongholds, wrong ways of thinking, wrong ways of believing, wrong ways of seeing, whatever you might be battling with at the word being preached and me receiving it, I can be made whole instantly. Isn't that amazing? Okay. That was not part of my message, but hey. Okay, so we're going to talk tonight. I titled tonight, Only Him. Say, Only Him. So we're going to look. I believe the booth is ready, but there's a lot of scriptures. So I printed them all off because there were so many that I won't even take the time to turn there. I'll just read them off of my page. So say this tonight. His words are life. They are medicine to all my flesh. Let's say it again. They are medicine to all my flesh. Know what that includes? Every part of you. Every part of you. Mind, body. It's medicine to your flesh. Say this. His words deliver me. His words bless me. His words increase me. They cause my eyes to see. Have you ever had it before where the words preach and it could be a scripture that you've heard many, many times and all of a sudden there's a new light bulb? You know where they say the light bulb goes on? Literally, you have those moments where it's like, ding, whoa. 
What is that? That's the Holy Spirit illuminating his word to you, causing light to come. And I believe that can be our expectation tonight. Thank you, Lord. Light is coming into me tonight. There's going to be things that I see that I've never seen before in your word that cause a change. Okay, so we're going to talk about only him tonight. We're going to talk about our trust being in him. And I love, actually, it was funny because I had sent a text to our staff today. And just said, say it out loud. I trust in God. So you can do that. It's very easy to think, I trust in God. And to never actually say, I trust in God. We have to get better at not just thinking, but saying. There is something powerful when we speak God's word. You know what it says? It creates things. You know, God in Genesis, he didn't just think creation. He spoke creation. God of the universe had to use his mouth. What do we see? Jesus had to use his mouth. Every prophet leading up to Jesus, had to do what for him to come? Use their mouth. It wasn't just thinking. We would not have a Bible if people just thought stuff. What does it say? It's the alive word of God. Words take a voice to speak them. So there is something powerful, and I would say fully we aren't trusting unless we're speaking it. Like, I can judge my trust level of where I'm at with what's coming out of my mouth. If what's coming out of my mouth is constantly fear, is constantly doubt, is constantly I don't have enough, we don't have enough, oh my gosh, look at this problem, what are we going to do? Oh my gosh, I got to work on that, oh my gosh, I got to do this, and oh, what what are we going to do? And I just don't know, I just don't know, I just don't know, I just don't know. That is proof of where my trust is at. Because you know what? I just don't know. There's a lot of stuff I just don't know. Which means I have to put my trust in God because he knows. And I'm going to be very limited if I'm just relying on my knowledge and myself or those around me for the basis of my life. It's actually very limiting why? Because we reach a limit where, where we go, I don't know. I'm tapped. I'm, have you ever seen that? I'm tapped out. I can't do anymore. Have we, we've all, I've a bazillion times reached that point. I'm tapped out. I, I don't know what to do anymore. Well, then you know what? Those moments I need to look and go, wait. Wait, wait, wait. I do know. Why? Because I have the greater one with me. And what? I'm trusting in myself. That's a good indicator to say, I'm trusting too much in myself here. Because if I'm trusting in God, it's a limitless supply. It's a limitless supply of wisdom. It's a limitless supply of knowledge. It's a limitless supply of everything that I need. So what are we saying? Look at our mouths. What are we saying? So I'm going to read this, Psalm 62, 2 through 12. This is the Young Living Translation. It says, only he is my rock. Say only. Only he is my rock and my salvation, my tower. I am not much moved. Know what? I'm going to be really moved if my trust is in myself. I'm going to be really moved if my trust is in the government. I'm going to be really moved if my trust is in my coworkers or my boss or my employees or whoever it might be, my job. I'm going to be really moved, and it's not just going to be every once in a while. It's going to be very often. So verse 6 says this, only he is my rock and my salvation, my tower. I am not moved. It says it again. 
On God is my salvation and my honor, the rock of my strength. My refuge is in God. Say that tonight. My refuge is in God. It's not in my ability to provide for myself. My refuge is in God. Trust in him at what? How often are we supposed to trust in him? So if it tells us to trust in him at all times, can we trust in him at all times? That means what? All throughout my day. Are we going to mess up? Yeah, we're going to mess up. From this sermon on, are we going to trust him 24-7 all the time? No, we're not. But you know what? Thank you, Lord, for his mercy. And also, thank you for the Holy Spirit who corrects us and brings us instruction, brings his word to illuminate to us and say, hey, Evan, you're not trusting here. Yeah. Then what's it? My job. Once the Holy Spirit illuminates that, then it's my job to say, okay, I take that and I'm going to change that. And not only am I just going to think it, I'm going to actually voice out loud, I trust in God. Lord, I did it just a week ago probably. Well, often since then, but I remember this specific. I was up cleaning my boy's bathroom, and I was just thinking about him because probably I was frustrated with how messy the bathroom was. And, uh, but, you know, then the enemy can come with thoughts or fear. And you know what I did? I listened to it for a little bit, probably a couple, couple minutes. And then you know what I did? The top of my lungs. I trust in God. And then you know what? I said it again. I trust in God. Lord, I trust you with Matthew. Lord, I trust you with Samuel. Lord, I trust you with Caleb. I trust you with my family. You're working all things together for good. They have hearts turned towards you. They know your voice and the strangers they don't follow. Then you know what it starts to do? You don't just usually stop with I trust in God. You usually keep going because what happens? Your focus shifts over into a limitless supply. When I do what? I begin to use my voice. And you know what that does? It stirs up faith. It stirs up belief in him. It takes the pressure off me. And you know what? Sometimes you also have to say, Lord, your word is working. You know what? Symptoms may be showing up in my body, but what does he say? I'm healed and whole. So you know what? Even though those symptoms may not physically be disappearing right now, I still know your word is working. I still trust you. I still believe you're my healer. You know what happens? Strength begins to rise up. Faith begins to rise up. Joy begins to rise up. You know, after I did that for a couple minutes, I was happy. I was very joyful. You know, my expectation for the future of my children was really, really good. Where previously, the enemy had been coming with not so good. But you know what? When my trust begins to shift over to him, it's light. It's freeing. It's limitless. Man, he'll paint those pictures. He'll bring those things back to you. It's amazing. What happens, though, it's key to use our voice. We have to use our voice. I'm going to say it again. We have to use our voice. We create just like he created with our words, with our voice. And I'll say this. If you don't like what you're seeing right now, change it with the words of your mouth. If what you're seeing is frustration, if what you're seeing is lack, if what you're seeing you don't like, put your trust over in him and begin to declare what he says. Get scriptures out. What does he say about it? What am I believing for? What am I standing on? Okay. So all that passage there talks about only, only him. He shouldn't be competing for trust. With me, he shouldn't be competing with trust. I should trust him fully. There's no competition there. Only him. Say that again. Only him. 
Say, I trust in God only. Okay, now we're going to practice one more time. You're going to do a lot of talking tonight, in case you didn't know, because that's what we're talking about, using your voice. Not just me, you. Say it like you mean it. I trust in God only. We have to say that. I trust in God only. End of discussion. Period. I trust in him. I trust his word. Okay. So, the enemy sometimes wants to get us to think that we don't have a choice. I always have a choice of who I'm going to trust. That's another thing the enemy's wanting to do right now is to take people's or to make them feel like he's taking their choice away. But you know what? As a born again Christian, as a believer, you always have a choice. From the very beginning, what do we see in the garden? God gave man a choice. He is not forcing you to trust him. He's not coming down and twisting your arm and putting your arm behind your back and saying, you better trust. You hear me? You better trust me. You better trust me. No, what's he doing? He's saying, it's your choice. So if it's my choice, then I have to make that decision. And it's not just a decision that I make once a week. (laughs) You know, because I made that decision yesterday doesn't mean I'm making that decision today. Because I made that decision one minute ago doesn't mean I'm making it right now. I had that today. Man, woke up first thing in the morning, was in the word. It was like trusting. You know, I was thinking on that, Lord. I spoke it out this morning. I trust in you. I was singing a Brother Keith Moore song, Only You. I put my trust only in you, singing it. It was like, woohoo. And then the day hit. And it's like, okay. And then it's here and here and doing this and doing this and doing this. And I thought, you know, I've been going the last few hours. The first hour was great. But the last few hours, I've kind of been running around. And my trust has really not been in God. So what did I have to do? I had to go back and I had to say, Lord, I put my trust in you. And you know what? I've had to do it 30 times since then. When the enemy wants to come, when pressure, when frustration, when things. And it's not enough for me to just go. Make the enemy hear it. Make him know I'm competitive. So I want him to know. (laughs) Like, you're trying to throw this? Here, take this. I trust in God. It's my competitive nature. So if you're not that way, find another way to get the devil. But my way to get the devil is for him to know I'm looking at him and for him to know that I'm speaking directly to him and that he is defeated and I am trusting in a greater source who has already whooped his tail. You know, every time I say, I trust in God, it's saying, enemy, you're defeated. Those thoughts you were trying to throw my way, it's not working. I'm moving ahead on God's plan. This church is moving ahead in God's plan. The church of Jesus Christ is moving ahead in God's plan. We trust in God. You got to let him hear it. Make him scared. Okay, Psalms 146 says this. I just wanted to read all this because I thought it was so good. Hallelujah. This is all the passion. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My innermost being will praise you, Lord. You know, this is David speaking. And a, a lot of these Psalms, I don't know if it's all of them or a lot of them, were written actually to music. 
So David actually had to sing. He actually had to say this out loud. This isn't just something he thought. He sang this out loud. He sang it, and probably more than one time. My innermost being will praise you, Lord. Do you think maybe that day David didn't really feel like that? But you know what he chose to do? He chose to voice his trust and his praise for the Lord. We more often have to voice our praise for the Lord and not be silent. I love what Pastor Nate's been talking about in this discerning crowds. And God is highlighting on this for the church. We cannot be silent. There is too much God is needing and wanting in the earth right now. And we're it. He's left the church here to do the job. He did his job. Now it's our turn to do the job. And you know what it takes? Our mouths. And there is a thing going on in the world to try to silence. And if we're careful as believers, we'll stay silent. And the enemy will convince us that that's love and it's okay. And it's not. I'm not saying to beat people over the head, and I'm not saying to be rude, and I'm not saying, but I am saying there is the word of God, there is truth, and we are to preach it, we are to display it unapologetically. And you know what it takes to preach the gospel? Your voice. You know what it takes to set captives free? The word of God spoken. I can't just go up to Mona and just stand in front of her. I got to say something. What, what did Jesus say? The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to set the captives free, to preach. You're a preacher. This isn't just the preacher. You actually know in Ephesians, this is not in my notes, but we're just rolling with it. Ephesians 4 talks about actually what the purpose of the fivefold gifts are. Prophet, teacher, pastor, evangelist, what I miss? Apostle. Those gifts are actually to equip the saints for them, say for me, to do works of ministry. So we've duped ourselves if we think coming to church, sitting our booty in a seat is everything that we're called to do. You're coming in here, number one, to give God honor. And then number two, you're coming to get equipped to do something. It is not the church pastor, and I'm not just speaking for ourselves, any pastors out there, any church staff, it is not their job to reach the community that they've been set in. Now, that's part of my job as the ministry of reconciliation, as a born-again believer just like you. But it is not my sole job to win this community for Jesus. It is to equip you to reach this community for Jesus. And you know the way we begin to do it? Stepping out and using our voice. You know how a lot of things can change and happen? Just by using your voice to pray out his plan. Don't stay silent. Use your voice. Lord, what are you wanting me to pray today? What are you wanting me to declare today? Why? Because I trust you. Doesn't matter what's going on around. I trust you. So I'm going to use my voice to advance your kingdom. Okay, we're going to keep going. I didn't even make it past verse 1. Okay. I will spend my life praising you and singing high praises to you, my God, every day of my life. We can never look to men for help. No matter who they are, they can't save us. For even our great leaders fail and fall. They too are just mortals who will one day die. At death, the spirits of all depart and their bodies are turned to dust. In the day of their death, all their projects and plans are over. 
But, say but. Those who hope in the Lord will be happy and pleased. Our help comes from the God of Jacob. You keep all your promises. You are the creator of heaven's glory, earth's grandeur, and ocean's greatness. The oppressed get justice with you. The hungry are satisfied with you. Prisoners find their freedom with you. You open the eyes of the blind, and you fully restore those bent over with shame. You love those who love and honor you. You watch over strangers and immigrants. This sounds like a lot like it's the subject of God. Man's not mentioned much here. (laughs) You, it's saying you, you, you. Verse 10, Lord, you will reign forever. Zion's God will rule throughout time and eternity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So what do we see? I love verses 3 and 4 there. We can never look to men for help. No matter who they are, they can't save us. Even our great leaders fail and fall. Now, this is not saying... Leaders are just trash and just whatever, and God's got them. It's not saying that. We are to still pray for our leaders. We are to still use our voice to pray for them that they lead in the right way, that wisdom is granted to them. But ultimately, God is who we trust in. God uses people. You know, I've had people come and bless us with money before. And you know what? That wasn't that person. That was God. But you know what? That person was used as a tool for God to get me a blessing. But you know where the source of that blessing came from? God. We begin to look to man for where our trust is based. And it can be very easy to put our trust in man for our supply. Like, what if all of us just got a text today that said, your job's done. No more income. Would we be in a tizzy? Would we be frantic? Would we be crying? Would we be mad? Would we be, or would we say, would our, my response be, that's okay, because my trust is in God? That's something we have to ask ourselves. And you know what? It shows really where your trust is at. If something I'm putting my trust in was just gone today, would I still, what would my first response be? And it's easy to say, oh, yeah, I trust in God. But, like, we get frustrated over itty-bitty things. Big or small, we have to trust God with everything. I was going to say with it all, but I didn't want to rhyme, so I changed it. (laughs) Okay. I live with my husband who rhymes on a continual basis. Okay. Okay. So let's, uh, let's say this out loud. I don't look to men as my source. Let's say it again. I don't look to man as my source. So you know what? When your boss doesn't give you all the attaboys and attagirls, does that throw you in a pit of depression? Does that make you want to quit your job and say, well, I'm just going to go somewhere where I'm appreciated? Or do you get your worth and your value and your identity through what your father says to you? Is is your uh, healing in your diet and your vitamins and your healthy drinks and your essential oils? That was, that was a husband of a very strong essential oil lady, guaranteed right there. But it's true. I'm not saying 
I, you know me, I, I like healthy food. I'm all about that. But you know what? If that's where my source is at, that's where my trust is at, that I'm going to maintain my health because of what I turn down and how good I eat and all the supplements I take and this natural doctor I go to. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where is my trust? What we're doing in life, what we're taking in life, where our job is, it's got to be, God, I trust you. And you know what? He'll lead you to things. He'll tell you things. But if I'm just adding things to my life because I just feel like I got to add it or do it, and I'm not ever asking the source, is this what you want? And then I'm wondering why stuff's going on in my life. Well, he's going, I never told you to do that. You just decided to do that because that was taking it into your own hands and saying, this is my miracle potion. Whoops. But I trust in God. Final, it. Who takes care of me? God. Who provides for me? God. Who's my healer? God. Who makes my marriage and family work? God. Not my counselor. Not the five-step program to a healthy marriage. Not saying all these things are bad. But I am saying if the first thing we go to is a natural, man-made, earthly source, we're wrong. If the first place I'm going to as a pastor of a church for information on something is Google or the church down the street or the Instagram church that, wrong. Lord, you're my source. You're my direction. Now, he may lead me to something, but if my first response is not going, what do you want? And I'm talking every small detail. Lord, what are you saying right now? What, what is your plan for our body? What's your plan for my family? What's your plan for this school year? What's your plan? If I'm just going and just, I'll choose this, and oh, because that happened, okay, well, I'll do this, and over here, this is looking this way, well, I got to do this, or everyone else is doing that, so if I don't do that, then I'm going to be the outcast. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not accountable to people. My life is accountable to him. So what happens? I check with him first. Lord, what are you saying? I'm not just, this is something I'm like, got a butt kicking myself. <laughs> it's not just like, we all got this. This is a daily mind shift we got to make to say, especially in the times we're living, Lord, we trust you. Because you know what? Every day, this world is changing. Every day you can turn on the news and tomatoes are great for you. And tomorrow, tomatoes cause cancer. So do I quit eating tomatoes? Or do I say, Lord, do you want me to eat tomatoes? Like, we got to get to this place where we're saying, I trust you with everything. 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 And sometimes it seems funny, but I'm talking everything. Normally I go to Aldi grocery shopping. Maybe God directed me to go to Walmart because I had this the other day. I bought a bunch of avocados at Aldi. They're 63 cents. And in my spirit, no joke, in my spirit, as I was loading up the avocados, the Holy Spirit said, don't get them here. Wait till you go to Walmart. And you know what I said? I'm not waiting until I go to Walmart because every time I go to Walmart, the avocados are at least that price or more expensive. And I seriously heard the Holy Spirit say, they're going to be four for a dollar. And I went, hmm. And I loaded up my 10 avocados and I drove over to Walmart. And guess what was in the Walmart bin? <laughs> Four for a dollar. But you know what I did? Trusted in my knowledge of avocados. Because it's so broad. <laughs> 
That was, I should trust God there. And it sounded so simple and so silly, but it literally was like, I was in Walmart and I sat and just stared at the avocado bin and just kind of like laughed. And I was like, seriously. And then I saw all of them and I thought, oh, they're probably all bad. That's why they're four for a dollar. They're all bad. They were perfectly ripe, great avocados. God wants to lead us in that. And you know what that is? That's like a little baby step of trust. To say, do I trust him when he's trying to show me something, even with avocados? But it's all throughout my day, Lord, I trust you. Am I so set in my agenda and my schedule and my stuff and the way I always do things and the way people always respond or the way? Or am I saying, Lord, I trust you? Okay. Sorry, I I haven't really (laughs) followed these, so let's see where we want to go. The less real God is to you, the more you look to yourself or man. The less God, the less real God is to you, the more you look to yourself or man. The more real God is to me, the more I look to him. When I was buying the avocados, God was not real to me because I, it's true. I was trusting in my knowledge of previous purchases instead of saying, Lord, I trust what you're telling me. And I'm just like, what does it hurt? Like, that's what I was telling myself after. If they're the same price, what does it hurt? But I was so set to prove him. You do not know. I know the price of avocados. And it sounds funny, but we do this in life. Like, no, I know. I know. I know if I do this, what's going to happen? I know if I go this way, what's... I know, I know, I know, I know. And you know what he's doing? You have a choice. Okay. Okay. You know. I say that to my kids and they go, I know, I know. I'm like, okay, you know. And then they'll go, well, actually. (laughs) Okay. If I don't believe in him, there's only one other place to look. Man. Man. If I don't trust him, there's only one other place to look, man. Man can often include not just other people, but myself. It's not like there's a whole lot of choices. It's either I'm trusting God or I'm trusting flesh and man. Have you ever had it where the pressure's on you, and because the pressure's on you, you're pressuring everybody else? Been there lots of times because I run late very often. So my pressure of time puts pressure on everyone else in my family. <laughs> and I'm saying, we gotta go, we gotta go now. And then I'm driving like a crazy woman. And now lately, because I'm driving like a crazy woman, I'm about to have a driver and I'm like, don't drive like me. <laughs> and manage your time so you don't act like your mother. But when the pressure is on myself, I pressure other people. When I'm feeling the pressure, I'm going, respond to me right now. Oh my gosh, I sent a text one minute ago and they aren't answering. I'm so pressured right now. We have to make a decision. Oh my gosh, I just got word of this and we have to decide right now. Like, doesn't that kind of life just get old? (laughs) I was just talking to my mom about this a couple weeks ago, but back when I was growing up, like, work stayed where work was at. There wasn't 24-7 access to everybody. Did you know you don't have to answer a text right away? Did you know you can take one minute 
and say, Lord, what are you saying? How should I respond? We get so easy to just go, 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 and I got to respond. Oh, my gosh, I got to know right now. Instead of saying, Lord, what are you saying? You know what he may say? He may give you words right then. He may say, wait. He may say, pray. He may say, ask them a question. He may say lots of things. But we'll never know unless we stop long enough to ask him. We live so much feeling the enemy does this to do what? To drive us. To push us and to say, you got to do it and you got to do it now. And you got to decide now. And oh my gosh, if you don't decide now. ah! And it's false. Majority of the time, it's not that pressing. It can wait. It's okay to tell someone, you know what, I just need to wait. We're going to talk to the Lord about this, and we're going to ask the source first. Who's my source? And I want to encourage you, before you ask other people's advice on stuff, now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying there's wisdom in a multitude of counsel, okay? But have you gone to the Lord first? When I'm facing a situation, when I'm facing something, am I saying, Lord, what are you saying? What are you directing me to do? And go that route before I Google everything, (laughs) before I call 15 people, before I'm looking at what the news is saying, before I'm looking at other stuff. Lord, what are you saying? Pause a minute and ask him, what are you saying about this? Think of Moses. What did, what did the Lord tell him to do? Hit the rock and what? Water came out. Man's natural tendency is to do what we did before. So what did Moses do? He went over second time and hit the rock. That's not what God instructed him to do. This is why. We got to ask the Lord. Same with Jesus. You see with the miracles he did. He didn't, he didn't do the same thing every time for sick people. What did he do? He only did what he heard the Father say. He took long enough to listen, even amongst pressure. Jesus' response in pressure wasn't, okay, 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 I'll do it, okay. He would pull away, actually. And he would go say, Lord, what are you saying? I'm pulling away from the noise, I'm pulling away from the pressure, and I'm saying, Lord, what are you saying? And I felt so strong tonight that there is people here that you've been in just a time where it's felt very pressed, like you're very pressed and you got to make a decision. And I saw that there's actually, it, it can be, um, when, you, when you're pressed and you're driving and you're driving and you're driving, you will break down. You can't just drive, 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 drive. Trust me, I've been there. Drive, 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 and just think your health is going to be okay. It's not. And I saw it as a warning. If you don't slow down, if you don't pull back, if you don't take some time to say, Lord, what are you saying? It's going to drive you into a spot you don't want to be driven. Take a minute. Step back. Ask the Lord, get quiet. If you got to take a day off, take a day off. If you got to pull away, pull away. If you got to take an hour away in an evening to go do it, whatever you got to do. But there is nothing driving you besides the enemy. If you're feeling driven and I got to, oh, and I'm just feeling so, oh, that is not healthy. That is not the way God intends us to live. And you know what? You can only hold it up so long before you're going to fall apart. I've been there. And if that's you, I would love to to talk with you, pray with you, whatever. If you're not comfortable with that, then I would just say get with the Lord. Take some time. But you know what his desire is? Is to lead you. He does not drive you. If you're feeling wore out and, and just stressed and pressed on every side, that is not God's best. And that is not his voice. And that is not his leading. 
And I think we get so used to just a culture of go, go, go all the time that we're so used to just being driven. We don't actually realize how much we're being driven till it's too late, till we're sick, till we're unhealthy, till we're depressed, till we have a mental or nervous breakdown. That is not God's best for us. And you know what? The pace we're to be running in this end times and all we're to be doing for God is not a pace of frantic and uh, he needs his church trusting him. He needs his church running at a good pace with grace because we're following him and we're being led, not driven. There's a difference. When I'm following him, there's a grace. There's such a grace. There's a grace to do what he's asked me to do. There's a grace to keep all my commitments. There's a grace to be faithful. There's a grace to do stuff. But if I flip the switch over into being driven all the time, that, that's, then I got to step back and I got to say, Lord, what's going on? Because obviously there is places in my life right now I'm not trusting you. I've said yes to stuff or no to stuff or whatever it might be. But I'm making a commitment to put my trust in you. So let's stand tonight. Please. Thank you, Lord. And just close your eyes. I want everyone to close your eyes. No eyes open. Thank you, Lord. And I just believe that that, I know it, it may it came across as like a strong word, but I wanted to deliver it exactly how I felt like he showed me this afternoon. Um, and it could be one person. It could be more than one person. But I just felt like it was just that um, it's the enemy's way to drive you. And sometimes it can be looked as I'm being diligent, I'm being a hard worker, I'm being, but it's not, it's not God's best. And I just saw it as a warning. And so um, I just believe the Holy Spirit's going to keep ministering to you on that. And he's going to give you the steps. And you know, one of the verses, um, when I went through just kind of a season of like a mental nervous breakdown and depression and all that junk, um, I remember he gave me that scripture, he's leading me out. And that was my confession every day. Lord, you're leading me out. And you know, um, a lot of times depression and um, mental or nervous breakdowns or fear or panic is a source um, from being uh, driven too much. You're, you're just too... You've taken on too much. You haven't trusted. And it's just simply the fact of switching over that and saying, Lord, I trust you. I trust you with my life. I trust you in my finances. I trust you with my family. And you just got to verbalize that and see your trust. Lord, I roll the, the whole of that care onto you. Whatever it might be, relationships, a business, a boss, I don't know, stuff with your kids, fear of the economy, whatever it might be that's bringing that torment and that cause for you to drive and to go and go and go and go. You just got to roll that over onto him and you got to say, Lord, I trust you. I trust you. I've been putting too much into my hands. And I just always picture myself just putting it all in my hands and lifting it up to him and seeing him take it. So if that's you, just see him taking that. Just see him lifting that off of you and saying, Lord, as he's doing that, I trust you with that. And I'm not going to take it back. I trust you with every part of my life. And I thank you, Lord, that you're leading me out. Just say that tonight. Lord, you're leading me out. You're not driving. You're leading. And so, Lord, tonight over each person here, I just thank you for the Holy Spirit coming to each person, each family, each marriage represented here. And I just thank you, Lord, for steps. Steps and clarity for uh, the season we're in, the, the things we're supposed to do because we're not supposed to stop. We're not supposed to pull back from kingdom purpose and what you've asked us to do, but there's a way to do it. 
So I just speak a grace over this congregation, over this ministry, over this church, in this last end time move of your spirit. I thank you that this body of believers is grace to run our race. We say that out loud. I am graced to run my race and to be led of you. So thank you, Lord, just, just for those steps, those steps. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, you're illuminating and you're showing areas that we've picked up, that we've taken. And I thank you, you're showing us the way out, the way that leads to refreshing, the way that leads to much fruit. Just thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We receive your wisdom. We receive your anointing to do everything you've called us to do. Greater are you in us than anything that we face. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And you know, I've been practicing this just the last few days. And I've seen, you know, oftentimes we can get into just such a driving, driving, driving. And we just have so much to do and a list of stuff. But I promise you. If you put God first in your day and you allow the Holy Spirit throughout your day and you're sensitive to him to say, Lord, I trust you, it is amazing the productivity you have. It's really pretty amazing because you think to yourself, I can't, I can't give up this time. I can't do this. That is a driving spirit from the enemy. You can. You can, and it's amazing what happens when you do that. The Holy Spirit will remind you of things. I had that today. There's about 10 things, and he reminded me right when I needed to do it, and it was just quick, and I was just quick, able to do it. And you know what? The productivity time was fast. I wasn't beating my brains out. I wasn't frustrated. It's just amazing when you roll that over onto him and trust him with that. Lord, I trust you with it. I trust you today you're going to remind me. I trust you today that you're going to show me what needs to be done, the, the order of my steps, how I need to do things, how I need to lead, what I need to do for my family, who needs my time today. We just put too much on ourselves, guys. And it's time to just put it all onto him and say, I trust you. You order my steps. You order my day. You got this whole plan planned out anyway. I'm just partnering with you. And you know what? It's so freeing. So I just believe there's freedom tonight. Amen. And just take those steps. Follow those cues that he's given you. And let him lead you. No driving. Because it's wearing. Amen. Well, we love you all so much. Don't forget we have service on Sunday. And Saturday is the ice cream. Can people still sign up? Or is that over? Over. Sheen says over. But we are going out. And so just be watching for that. It's going to be awesome. We're, you guys, though, can still partner if you did not sign up because you can pray. You can pray for the teams going out and for the love of God to be demonstrated. I just believe we're going to see salvations and healings and testimonies. This is a time to use our voice and to be a blessing on Saturday. So just be lifting that up in prayer, and we'll see you all Sunday. We love you. Have a good night.